What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the brand new Lenovo Legion Pro 7i Gen 8 laptop. This is a monster. Thanks to Lenovo and Intel for sponsoring this video and sending me out this unit for testing. Laptops are one of the things that I really wanted to start to dive into more on the channel. And when I heard at CES about their LA1 AI chip, which uses AI to tune the system's performance for a better gameplay experience, I definitely wanted to check it out because combining AI with hardware for gaming sounds like it would be a game changer, no pun intended. Now, even though this video is sponsored, it doesn't influence my opinions at all. I'm still going to give you a full breakdown of my thoughts, full benchmarks. You can see the raw performance here, and I'm not even keeping this unit. So with all that said, let's dive in. This is the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i Gen 8 model. They also have a Pro 5i Gen 8 model, but this one's, you know, more spec to my liking. And this is way more powerful than my current gaming laptop I have with an RTX 2070. This has a 13th gen Intel Core i9 13900HX CPU and an RTX 4080 graphics card, which also even outperforms my desktop PC. Taking a look around for IO, on the left side of the laptop is a Thunderbolt 4 and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port with the exhaust vents running towards the back. The right side features those same exhaust vents with a second USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Then is your webcam privacy cover switch and your 3.5 millimeter audio and mic combo jack. Then along the back side is an ethernet port, 140 watt USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, which doubles as display port 1.4, HDMI, two additional USB 3.2s, and the power input surrounded by more exhaust vents on each side. The trackpad isn't anything special with its plastic finish and doesn't have like rumble haptics or anything to it. It feels like a standard actuation, but I only use a mouse with gaming on my laptop as do 99.99% .99 of you gamers out there, I'm sure. Now as a keyboard guy, straight up, I am just not used to using a laptop keyboard in this form factor. I'm sure you know if you follow the channel, I'm much more into the custom keyboards and the physical desktop keyboards. So. Testing this and getting used to this, as you'll see, was a bit of a challenge for me. Lenovo calls it their Legion True Strike keyboard, filled with per-key RGB lighting and different effects in Legion Spectrum that I'll show you in just a minute. It's a full-size layout with your arrow keys and a numpad, and inside is a membrane scissor switch. So, personally, you know, not my cup of tea. I'm just not a rubber dome user or a fan, but they do have a 1.5 millimeter travel distance to them, and the keycaps themselves aren't squared. They have a very slight arc-like roundness to the bottoms to accommodate the shape of your fingertips. We'll do a sound test now so you could hear how it sounds. Okay, into the RGB. While it's not as integrated into the entire laptop like it was on last year's model, the keyboard is still fully illuminated with per-key lighting, and the bottom of the front lip of the laptop has a strip as well, so you get that extra glow right in front of you. You can adjust the lighting on the keyboard itself with function space, which switches between the six profiles, or in the Lenovo Vantage app, you can go in and customize it there. I highly recommend this since you can go in and completely configure all the lighting effects. And they have cool things like an audio visualizer so your keyboard will pulse visually along to the music or your audio in game, for example. Always looks pretty cool. They have 13 different effects, but you can also combine different effects together to really get creative with your RGB glow. My personal favorite, besides just a static color, is their Legion Aurora Sync, which is pretty much just biased lighting on your keyboard, as it mirrors the colors and visuals happening on your screen real time. Now on the channel, I've shut off a bunch of like physical light strips and adapters that you can use with your TV or your gaming monitor, so it's really cool to see it built in here natively, especially cool in games like Apex, Valorant, or an Overwatch that have a lot of bright, you know, colorful visual effects going on to the gameplay. So it's then portrayed onto the keyboard, also underneath on that bottom strip as well. Taking a peek inside, there are just 10 screws underneath to remove the bottom panel. However, you do need to be very, very careful because it doesn't just slide off. You will need to use a pry tool to carefully pop the lid around the outer I.O. covers, which is actually attached to that bottom panel. Inside, you got a massive battery, the biggest that's legally allowed to fit in a laptop, actually. And this Pro 7 model with both the RTX 4080 and 4090 GPUs use their Legion Cold Front 5.0. So you'll see with those two intake fans with 0.1 millimeter fan blades, along with the vapor chamber technology for both the GPU and the CPU, it works together to keep the temps manageable during intensive gameplay or just power hungry software. 
Now this liquid metal vapor chamber technology is available in other models, but only for the CPU. So like I said, with models that have the 4080 and 4090, they also use this for the GPU cooling through the hybrid heat pipes. When running benchmarks and recording attempts, the CPU averaged 84 degrees Celsius and 73 degrees Celsius for the GPU. And these were all averaged over a series of three plus hours, also averaged out over multiple games that I played. And then obviously idle temps were also measured with the CPU around 47 and the GPU at 39 degrees. And since those two intake fans are on the bottom, air is also being pumped in through the keyboard up top. So during use, the actual like outer thermals of the laptop were never to the point where it was uncomfortable to use like physically when touching it. That heat being dissipated out of the outer vents though, that's where it was a bit warmer obviously. Now let's do a deep dive into the display. First off, one of the most like literal make or break situations when talking stability are the hinges. I've hated over the years in the laptops that I've checked out that have like a wobbly screen where the hinges are too weak. And thankfully that is not the case here. This is literally the first thing I cared about when I got this in and unboxed it. The display barely has any flex to it. The hinges stay nice and tight and you can open and close the display without the entire laptop lifting or moving as well. Another thing the hinges allow for is the display to lay flat, a full 180 degrees down from closed to fully open. This is admittedly something that I don't know how often I'll actually need or use, but it is possible here and goes to only impress me more that the hinges are so tightly secured during just normal angles and use that it still doesn't waver even when going fully flat like this. But for picture quality, the actual display here is their Lenovo PureSight gaming display. At 16 inches with a 16 by 10, 2560 by 1600 IPS panel, it not only takes up 94% of the surface area with extremely minimal bezels as you can see, but this looks stunning for gaming, consuming media, everyday use, whatever. It has a variable refresh rate from 60 hertz to 240 hertz for gaming and a three millisecond response time. But one of the things that I noticed right away was the matte anti-glare coating. Sure, while a glossy display gives it more of a natural pop to the colors and vibrancy, matte anti-glare coating is always fantastic when in a situation like this, where, where I'm filming this review in my studio with hundreds of lights, right? The actual image wasn't affected and the viewing angles, even from like the sides and stuff, still looked great as well. In their Vantage software, they actually have a built-in X-Ray color assistant, which lets you pick between different profiles and alters the display's gamma. So this can be changed if you're like primarily photo or video editing, for example, and want more of that true Rec. 709 image. But out of the box, it is rated at 100% sRGB color space, and it's capable of 500 nits peak brightness. Their default color profile though is what I had it at, and honestly, have no complaints. So again, for being a matte display, watching some movies, gaming, and just color visuals still looked great. Even just like loading up YouTube, for example, and watching some videos where it's like primary focus is to showcase those extreme examples of vibrant colors and these flattering subjects to highlight a panel's performance. At the end of the day, I have zero complaints about how this looks. So one of the biggest selling points to these Lenovo laptops and really one of their biggest marketing points that I saw at CES, I believe two years ago at this point at CES 2021, is their innovation and the Lenovo LA1 AI chip, which is in this laptop. In this new wave of AI technology, their AI Engine Plus is pretty crazy. In Lenovo Vantage, this can be toggled on and off and combines the best of hardware and software tech using system sensors real time to optimize your laptop for better FPS and performance. So for the upcoming benchmarks, I tested everything twice. Once in performance mode, which you know, increases fan speed, power consumption, so the laptop is physically giving it its all, hence the name performance mode. And then also in balance mode with the AI Engine Plus turned on, so it has that AI stuff going on behind the scenes. So you'll have both test markers there. This, especially for the games that it's optimized for, will have a little indicator badge in my benchmarks, and it's gonna be your best bet to have enabled for said games, since that's what's gonna give it the best, you know, performance instead of needing the actual performance mode turned on to push your system to 100% each time. So for example, when enabled in Lenovo Vantage, a CPU heavy game's gonna get more CPU power through TDP dynamic tuning. And it'll ramp up fan speeds accordingly to keep the system from thermally throttling. Background tasks will close to free up system resources. 
AI Engine Plus is learning what you're playing, what's going on in the game at that moment, and adjusting your system so it gives you the best performance. Again, all real time, and all without you having to go in and manually alter your in-game settings and the graphical settings to give you a better FPS boost. It's also doing things like using algorithms to improve your network bandwidth, so you're not you know, lagging in-game due to your network issues, like you having 10 tabs of YouTube open, for example. And it disables the trackpad when using a mouse, so there are no accidental misclicks on the trackpad. With Intel's latest hybrid architecture, the 13th generation Intel Core CPU gives you the power to push your gameplay experience to that next level, especially for those more intensive games that require that extra power delivery. Using Smart Cache, the 13900 HX uses expanded cache sizes that accelerates the processor for better performance and higher FPS in your games. Then when combined with the power of the AI Engine Plus, you're literally getting one of the most advanced chipsets that's constantly being tuned to give you the best gameplay experience. All at the click of a button as well. So as you saw from those benchmarks, in most cases, yes, performance mode is gonna give you around a 10 FPS average boost over balance mode, but also performance mode is pushing your system to its limits. All while balance mode runs noticeably quieter, and in theory, the more you play a certain title, the more it's gonna use AI to learn and adapt your system going forward. I mean, some of the titles that I showed even outperform performance mode with the AI Engine Plus turned on. So really, it's a game by game basis on how it'll perform, but I can only imagine the list of compatible games is gonna be growing with time. Also do a fan sound test comparison for you. Now getting into the overall price and performance here for this laptop. Like I said in the beginning, I've been more personally interested in the laptop landscape, so I wanna do more content on the channel. Uh, so I checked things out. And comparing this model to even Lenovo's last gen model, this is about $500 cheaper at launch and it has better specs with the 4080 here versus the 3070 model. Even checking out other models with nearly identical specs out there, you can Google this if you want, it's nearly a thousand dollars cheaper than that. So really, when you're talking current powerful hardware out there and you take a look at other models, this I think for the price is one of the best price and performance laptops you can personally get. Now, that's all great. The performance, the specs, the display, this has so much going on that I'm a big fan of, but there are two things that I'm not necessarily in love with that I will bring up. First, as I mentioned, I really wish Lenovo would have kind of pushed it a bit more and found a way to put in mechanical switches. We know it's possible. Other laptops have done it. Kale, uh, low profile chalk switches. It could have been done. I would have loved to have seen that, but that's just from me, someone who's too much into keyboards. And also not to like, you know, put it apples to apples against the last gen model, but this kind of takes away some things that I really liked on the last gen model. First up being the power button, uh, this no longer has a built-in fingerprint reader. That was really cool. Uh, there's less RGB on this model. The last one had it integrated into like the vent. And also the back IO used to be illuminated. We're on here, it's not. So just my two cents on those two points that I wish, you know, would have sort of carried over onto this model. I get that it's $500 cheaper and it's way more powerful, uh, but still, at the end of the day, jumping back into laptops on the channel, this is a hell of a one to start off with. Absolutely loving this. I wanna hear your guys' thoughts. What are your thoughts on AI Engine Plus? Do you see AI playing more of a role in laptop landscapes going forward with how it can combine hardware and software to give better FPS in games? I wanna hear your thoughts. And I also want to hear down below your thoughts on how this video was for my first review in like four years of laptops. Give me some ideas of things that I didn't check out, things you want to see, or things that you didn't really get and take away from this video. And again, thanks to Lenovo Legion and Intel for sponsoring this video. So guys, that'll wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check this model out, I'll put this as well as the other Lenovo models in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.